there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vero and in today's video, I'm setting up my bullet journal spreads for the month of June. Last month, my motivation for bullet journaling was really down in the trenches, but heading into June, my morale is a lot higher. So my motivation for bullet journaling has also come up a little bit. So I'm very excited for this plan with me. Anyway, let's get straight in with the cover page. I had this idea for this month where I really wanted to integrate an envelope for my monthly log, uh, but I didn't know how to incorporate it. So I spent a lot of time trying to origami an envelope and make it fit onto the page. And then I realized that the theme was trending towards a scrapbook vintage theme. So to start off, I decided to cut a giant wavy hole in the middle of the page where I'm going to be incorporating some scrapbooking techniques to give this theme a vintage effect. Now for the book paper, I'm just taking the pages out of this book, which is The Fault in Our Stars. I have not read this book since I was like 15. I have no desire to reread this book, so I'm recycling it. In fact, recently you may have noticed that I've started creating shorts on my channel where I set up spreads in my long form journal by scrapbooking. This is very popular content on my channel by the way so definitely go check it out if you haven't already i'm also doing a whole series where i set up my travel journal for my big road trip in july and august in the archer and olive march subscription box pocket size journal which you can find in my most recent unboxing over here anyway the whole point to what i was just explaining is that i've been using book paper in a lot of these spreads so it's definitely not my first time and i'll definitely be using every single page in this book for future scrapbooking ideas so if you're interested in more scrapbooking ideas definitely go check out the shorts part of my channel but let's go back to the cover page now. I traced out a smaller splodge on the book paper after laying it down underneath the hole that I'd cut out first because we're going to go for two separate layers on the cover page and I'll stick it in later because we're just going to focus on doing the origami to figure out how to do this envelope, I've deconstructed an envelope that my lovely pen pal Alex sent to me and I've just tried to figure out how she folded it so that I could incorporate this into my own journal. Now, if you would like to recreate this as well, you can definitely follow along the steps that I'll be giving. And also the paper that I'm using is thin craft paper. You don't want thick paper for origami because you'll be folding it a lot. And the size of the paper is exactly 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters, which fits really nicely into my A5 bullet journal. So that kind of gives you an idea of the dimensions of the paper if you're interested. To start the envelope, of course, we're going to cut the square out from the craft paper. Now, maybe you already have paper lying around that happens to be 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters. Otherwise, you're just going to have to cut it out. I'm using this guillotine that I got from Officeworks because it's just practical to have it this way, so I don't have to make ragged edges when I'm cutting with scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the paper in half lengthwise twice. This gives me folded edges to use as guidelines for the next steps. Next, I'm going to fold in three of the corners of the paper into the center where you see that cross shape that we created when we folded the paper earlier. These three sides are going to create the top of the envelope and the two sides of the envelope. Then opening the top edge, we're going to fold in the bottom corner to the fold of the top corner. I don't know if that makes any sense, but if you're watching the video, you should sort of understand what I'm trying to say. Then you're going to unfold it and you're going to fold down the edges from that bottom side that you've just folded upwards in towards the center. So again, please pay attention to the video because my explanation is not the greatest. What I did after I folded those edges in, I unfolded them and I folded the corner up to the original line where I folded it first. That way it gives me some guidelines to do the next set of folds. And I'm going to create this kind of weird house square with a triangle on top shape that is going to fold in. And then I'm going to tuck the side bits of paper into those little tucked edges. And that is going to create the envelope. I know that my explanation wasn't that great, but I hope that by following this video, you are able to to create this style of envelope. Lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut a rounded edge for the top of the envelope that fits in nicely with my wavy edges for this month's theme. Anyway, I do apologize for my really um, questionable explanation of origami folding techniques. The only other thing I know how to make are origami cranes, cranes like the birds, not the machine, which you can actually see hanging behind me when I'm talking about introductions and conclusions. I've strung them all together on fishing lines, so they look like they're hovering behind me, and I think it's a really cool effect. Next up, I stick the book paper onto the back of the envelope after cutting the paper into a sort of rectangular shape that won't go over the borders of my journal page. Then I fiddle around to get the placement just right and stick it down so that it looks like this. So here's the cover and the back. We'll come back to the monthly log in just a moment, but let's just decorate the cover page quickly. With a black hard tip Tombow Fudunosuke pen, I'm going to write June on the craft paper and then use some stamps from the March subscription box from Archer and Olive with black ink that I have from No Issue and stamp on some pretty flowers. All 
right, let's move on to the next part. I'm going to set up my page for my habit trackers first because where's the fun in doing things in order? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my book paper and place it on the page. Now, because the book is too small, I have to use two sheets of paper to create this nice layout and I will cut out a wavy line, stick this down, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the craft paper. I'm not worried about going over the edges of my journal because obviously I can cut that out later. Once I stuck it down, I'm just going to cut off the excess paper and then I'm going to move over to my monthly log. Now, as you've seen me put the envelope on the next page, I'll be cutting a piece of paper that fits inside of it. I didn't really plan this out beforehand, so I'm pretty lucky that the size and shape of my envelope makes my monthly log look okay. I'm using the notepad paper from Archer and Olive's 2D Fruity Notepad, and I'm just placing the paper over the envelope to figure out the size, and then I cut that out. Now, I'm not throwing away the leftover paper because I'll be using that for my habit trackers, and if you are interested in the Archer and Olive notepads, they currently have Neapolitan, so that's white, craft, and black paper, and pastel notepads in stock and they are the best investments ever you can use my cheeky code vera10 for 10 percent off your purchase i think it's been a while since i've self-promoted my affiliate discount code so sorry if you've heard it recently if you do use my code i get a small commission of no extra charge to you and it really helps me out as a small creator anyway back to the video i trace out the lines for the monthly log and a small calendar fits perfectly on this paper if each day is three by three squares i'm going to use the same flower stamp to put the weekday initials on the top of the boxes and i'm going to color in the centers with the black pen first, then using an acrylograph to write out the initials of the days of the week. For a couple more embellishments, I'm writing June and adding some little flower stamps, which I think is a super cute touch. Back to our habit tracker. Now, last month, I said I wanted to try tracking many habits to see if I could get out of my Boudreaux slump. And lo and behold, it worked pretty well. I found that this month tracking so many habits actually made me feel really good about myself instead of discouraging me. Don't be too scared of this because back in April, I was tracking only four habits. And out of those four habits, I really only tracked two habits. So month to month is always different. And sometimes I'm going to feel like tracking a lot of things one month and other times I'm just going to like cut it back down to absolutely almost nothing. But this month we are tracking lots of habits again because I really enjoyed it in the month of May. And I hope that continues for the month of June. Now, of course, some of the habits that I tracked in May were a bit redundant, but it's always nice to include a habit you know you do to give yourself a small bit of encouragement. That's my pro tip of the day, by the way. Track a habit that you know you already do. Then you can color in a little circle and feel good about yourself. So following last month's success, I've chosen to track nine habits on my habit tracker page. I actually have more habits that I'll be tracking, but they're going in a surprise location. And we'll get back to that a little bit later in the video. The habits I'm including on my habit tracker page are my daily habits. Now I'm not even going to try and convince you that I do every single one of these habits every single day, because that would be a lie. I am typically a productive person but I'm not perfect and sometimes you just need a day off or several. As I mentioned, I kept the leftover beige notepad paper and I'm going to cut it into small mini calendars to use as habit trackers. So this month I am going for mini calendars as habit trackers instead of having anything in a horizontal habit tracker or a vertical habit tracker. And if you want some more information on different habit trackers, you can check out my video on different habit trackers. It's linked right over in the description box and the card above. And because I don't have any grid lines now that I stuck the book paper and the craft paper down, I'm just eyeballing where to place the habit trackers so that they look somewhat well spaced out on the page. The habits that I'm tracking again this month are drinking 500 milliliters of water as soon as I wake up, doing yoga and going swimming. As you may know, I'm trying the 75 hard challenge or well, the 75 medium for me. And that consists of two 45 minute workouts a day, but I obviously can't do that. Or I should say, I don't want to do that. So I'm going for two 30 minute exercises a day. So 30 minutes of yoga and 30 minutes of swimming. Although I've slightly upped my swimming to 35 to 40 minutes. But that's a whole other story, which we won't get into. Next, we have a new habit or one that I am reintroducing, and that's no sweets at work. I did well during the second half of April and the beginning of May, but I have kind of slacked off recently, so I'm bringing this tracker back. I also want to be drinking at least two liters of water a day, and you'd be surprised at just how hard I find this habit. I am not good at drinking water. I like the tracker of not spending money. I also have reading nonfiction books as a tracker because that's part of the 75 hard challenge. This is actually easier than I thought it would be. I 
thought I would struggle with this one. But when you get started, 10 pages is not a lot. I actually end up reading a couple more than 10 pages. Although some days 10 is all I can manage. And that is good enough. I also have washing my bottle. And this is a habit I started in April. And I know that there are lots of us out there that are pretty bad with washing our bottles. So this should be a tracker for a few other people out there, I'm pretty sure. Now I'm okay with this, although I think I wash it once every two days. But that is still better than before, where I'd only ever wash it if it was smelling a bit rank. So sue me. <laughs> I know, that's bad too. Lastly, a habit that I've been doing fairly well with is flossing at night. I still need the occasional reminder, but I'm fairly consistent with this and I'm going to use this as my habit that I do regularly to motivate me with my other habits so that I can fill in a little tiny circle. <laughs> when I did this type of habit tracker in April, I didn't outline the individual boxes on the little mini squares or mini calendars, so I found it a wee bit hard to track. So this month I'm just crossing out the additional boxes so I don't get lost and this is what it looks like. Now we are on to my secret habit location. Now these are for habits that are more weekly tasks or bi-weekly tasks and that's going to be on the back of my monthly log card. I thought it was a cute idea and a way to maximize the space because there is technically a blank space on the back of my monthly logs so I figured that I would use it. I cut out some craft paper and stuck it to the back side of the monthly log. Now technically I didn't have to do this but when I started counting squares to add in five different habits it just didn't fit. Like I think I was one square off of it fitting onto this piece of paper so I decided to put craft paper then I could stick in five little pieces of paper on top to write my five weekly habits which are using retinol twice a week, washing my hair twice a week, vacuuming and cleaning the bathroom once a week and doing laundry whenever I do laundry. So there we have it that's my monthly setup for June. Now I was unfortunately on another planet when I must have been doing my weekly spreads because I just didn't film it. <laughs> I accidentally forgot to press record and yeah. So here's a flip through instead, but I think you understand the gist of it. It's not that difficult to understand. I've used the book paper and craft paper to create another wavy thing on the side of this page. And it's a page where I'm going to be listing my master to-do list, but I've called it this month instead of master to-do list because it looks prettier. On the next two pages, we have wavy Dutch doors for my weekly spreads. I think I'm going to be doing rolling weeklies, but I may decide to do structured ones. So I'll have a look at that later. And the reason I'm contemplating structured weeklies is actually because I'm currently reading the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and there's this weekly log that looks kind of tempting to try out so I might give it a go this month but I don't actually have enough space so we'll see. I've also used a calligraph pen to color the edge of the second Dutch door and on the last page I have stuck down some craft paper with a tiny wave for my monthly review page. And that's what this kind of looks like. And that's it friends! So here's a quick flip through of all of my spreads for this month. I think it's a really cool theme with elements that I've never really done before. I might be adding some more stamps with little flowers because I think I didn't put enough, but I do really love this theme and I think it makes the upcoming month a bit more exciting. And in fact, one of the things that I am actually really excited about is the fact that this monthly log can be taken in and out of the envelope and not just for aesthetic reasons. I can actually move my monthly log depending on the week that I am so that I can see a month overview whilst also looking at my week overview. I feel like it's an extra step of like coordination or productivity, maybe? I'm not entirely sure, but there's something there, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this plan with me today and if you're looking for some more inspiration for bullet journaling I have a whole playlist where I break down all the different bullet journal spreads that you can include in your bullet journals along with all of their different variations or at least the ones that I've come up with in the playlist over here. Have a very peaceful week ahead of you and I will see you in the next one. Bye!